EdHive is an intelligent online medical market space empowering small to medium hospitals with intelligent procurement tools and dashboards. MedHive just raised $407,500 in an oversubscribed pre-seed funding round led by Pegasus Tech Ventures and Foxmont Capital Partners. Nigel Lirio is the CEO and co-founder at MedHive. So, hello Nigel. We're very honored Hi. to have you and MedHive here <laughs> sa Startup Podcast. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks for the invitation and it's great to great to end in dito ako. <laughs> so, yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Medhive, Medhive actually is making rounds right now in the Philippines and even abroad in the startup ecosystem, in the startup world. So let's start with the question, ano nga ba ang Medhive? Okay, so I guess yung pinaka simple way to describe it is uh, uh, what we do is we're similar to an Alibaba and where we're a marketplace. Uh, what we connect, uh, we connect mga hospitals, uh, clinics, uh, medical institutions, Uh, to reliable and uh, safe sources of uh, medical supplies. So these are your you know, uh, distributors, importers, and even manufacturers. Um, and we do this through a digital channel. So uh, it doesn't matter kung saan galing yung hospital or yung clinic. They're able to have an uh, easy and accessible uh, space to find the best distributors for them. Yeah. Uh, for me it's very interesting no that you use the term market space not marketplace. <laughs> And um <laughs> maybe let's start with the basic first. So ano bang advantages ng online like in the medical space in the medical community? Ano bang advantages mm-hmm. if you can like find distributors online, you can buy the supplies online? Yes. Okay. So I, I guess I have to set ng konti yung context lang. So uh, a lot of our private hospitals are, you know, outside Metro Manila. Okay. Uh Actually, a lot of them. Uh, so, just describing lang what what one of our case studies, I guess. Uh, one of the hospitals we outside Metro Manila that we visited. Uh, one of the thing, uh, one of the processes they had for purchasing medical supplies was uh, they had to drive all the way to Metro Manila, uh, Bambang. Actually, wow. uh, yeah. yeah, Bambang. <laughs> uh, familiar, yung yeah, parang yeah, yeah. ano where you get all the medical supplies and all that and. Uh, that's where they would buy uh, their medical supplies uh, retail at retail price pa. and I guess that's what surprised us because uh, this was just one of the hospitals that you know we visited but if you ask around uh, apparently ganun lang talaga yung mga processes ng mga ibang hospitals because apparently uh, the further you are the more difficult it is to get uh, a good distributor yeah. so You would need to have a you know a really established network, or uh, you know you need to have a lot of good connections to be able to uh, inya, have these special procurement perks na parang may magde deliver sa you or something. So usually, yung mga smaller hospitals they don't have that. They would have to drive all the way to you know Metro Manila just to purchase. It. And I guess that that's the pain point we really wanted to address first. But then uh, I think just to go to your point about market space, <laughs> uh, we decided that other than just being a you know place to transact or something, we, we were also looking to provide additional value to make it easier for your know, procurement managers to be able to you know not just find and purchase, but uh, also assess like uh, assess and uh, you know canvas the right type of supplier they need for their business. Yeah, speaking of that, ano, no, of that extra value that you provide, uh, Medhive um, is an intelligent online medical market space. So I want to know, naman, itong intelligent part na to. So I mean, uh, first, why intelligent? I mean, how did you find that making it intelligent um, gives it more value? Mm-hmm. And how do you make it intelligent? I mean, what's in Medhive's technology you, that makes it intelligent? Okay, uh, again, uh, and more context lang. So. Uh, one thing that surprised us uh, uh, with the private hospitals that we usually meet or you know, work with, uh, the procurement manager would usually be like a doctor or like a practitioner, and pa- parang nasa split yung time niya basically with you know the the actual uh, you know the practice and you know the management of the hospital, and I guess that's where we saw that okay. Uh, you know, this is something that we should step in. We should we should help these because you know these are doctors that 
should you know, should be focusing on their patients saving you know saving lives rather na parang naghihirap pa sila with trying to contact five to ten distributors just to figure out where you know where's the best place to buy their face mask or gloves for their uh, emergency room and uh I, that's where i guess we saw an opportunity that you know we could do much more and that's where i guess the intelligence side to it comes in we don't just uh refer uh, suppliers to you but we also try to provide an extra layer of assistance in where uh, okay this uh you know we'll, we'll handle all the canvassing for, uh for you just give us all the specs you need and uh basically we we were able to save or cut the time necessary for uh f- for the usual canvassing because usually they would have to call 10 to 15 suppliers mm. it would now just take uh about a week on average yes, yes, for yes. us with yeah. our platform yeah i really like that no so the doctor nga uh, matatanggal na yung stress of managing of thinking about the logistics maybe the distribution and yung pag-decide yung pag-canvas nga Um, and he can focus on saving more lives. Now, um, I want to know um, why or, pa, or paano kayo napunta sa small and medium hospitals? Because I think that's one of the attractive things about mm. life. I mean, you're not just like serving or providing value for the large um, built hospitals na talaga. So, how did you come with uh, solving the problems of these small and medium hospitals? Okay, so actually... Uh... For me, uh, this was actually a very personal problem because uh, my family has owned and operated two private hospitals for over 50 years, and uh, parang firsthand, uh, nakita ko din yung problems with, when it comes to procurement. Uh, you see the issues when it comes to managing yung mga bidding and you know the payment terms and all this. And I guess it was that you know experience for me that um, made me realize that you know. Uh, These problems aren't just exclusive to my hospital, but uh, you know other hospitals as well see this. And usually, the hospitals that, that have these problems are the hospitals that you know uh, don't have the scale to one hire a really good uh, management uh, procurement management team or a uh, you, you know the mga <laughs> inventory or uh, inventory advisors and all that. Uh, usually these are very small hospitals and if you look at the i guess the number the hospital figures here in the philippines uh, you'd see that in terms of counting uh, most of the hospitals here are actually that type of hospital yung mga, yeah. I, i guess the level one hospitals level two hospitals and a lot of our you know, a lot a lot of uh, filipinos rely on these types of hospitals to uh, serve them and to provide good healthcare so to us parang it felt right that we should also serve these types of hospitals because these are the hospitals that you know need these types of you know, uh need the value that we provide in terms of like the digital platform yeah it's true um, especially i think sa like provinces i mean outside metro manila hindi mm. naman ganun ka dominated ng like large um private hospitals yung areas na yun eh so Um, y- y- so yun ba yung palang talagang target nyo? I mean those kinds of areas and like and um can we get a picture lang din? like um what specific supplies or items ba itong mga natat pwedeng mabili or pwedeng mahanap sa Medhive platform? I mean let's just put it out there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess in terms of like the target, uh, we do we did want to start with the uh, level one these types of hospitals first because. Uh, yun nga, they are the ones who have the problem, who have this problem the worst. Uh, sila yung wala talagang uh, ex-procurement manager or expert that could really help them with their uh, supply chain management and all these types of things. And uh, so yeah, we, we are heavily focused on them. However, we do see a lot of opportunities Ren, with even the hospi- bigger hospitals. Uh, there are a lot of uh, opportunities now to also digitize and innovate yung even the bigger hospitals uh, procurement cycle and all that so uh, but yeah uh, just to answer that question we were starting with the level one person but uh, and in terms of what type of products uh, you could see we, we actually started no 2020 uh, it wasn't actually covid that got us rolling mm. it was <laughs> the taal eruption uh, if you still remember it, that surgical yeah Yeah. yeah, N95 face masks. Uh, 
some of our first uh, orders actually came from hospitals and uh, and char- charity groups that were situated or were going to work with the southern air uh, southern Luzon area where they had the Taal eruption. And uh, one thing that we were able to do very you know very well was we were able to save them time and money. So it took them. Uh, I, I guess since this was an emergency, you know, procurement uh, order, we were able to serve it in less than less than a week. Like I think two to three days, we were everything was already delivered to them, and it cost them half, fifty uh, percent of the market price. Uh, because remember, nung nagkar ng you know ashfall, the prices suddenly skyrocketed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But because of our network of uh, suppliers and good partners, we were able to negotiate. Uh, mm-hmm. A really good deal, and where yeah, these hospitals selling pa priorities naman with the stocks, and sell, and we were also negotiating that they get a better pricing, price price range. And yeah, so, yeah. Uh, yeah, so we started with medical supplies, but now we're also exploring into medical devices, medical mm-hmm. equipment, and even pharmaceuticals. Mm-hmm. So anything and everything that a hospital would might need, uh, we want to cover that. <clears throat> Yeah, so parang ano no, so parang Meta is building this technology to make the medical market more free market. Parang kasi if hindi ganun ka free market na parang mahirap maghanap ng suppliers ng face mask, face mask nga maybe. Yung iba pwedeng mag-hoard, yung iba pwedeng mag I mean yes. lock ng supply, di ba? So that's that disrupts the price, that makes it harder hmm. for for yung mga level 1 hospitals nga to get the supplies. And yeah, I really like that part ah, na you make it uh, like uh freer for everyone so mapapababa yung prices. Yeah. Now um I'm also very curious because you said this nga na you started the level 1 hospitals and then um you're kind of exploring the naman yung moving into the large hospitals. Pero I'm very curious maybe later I can ask you like how did you pitch this um this business model because I mean I'm just thinking like if you're mm-hmm. going to fundraise I mean the diba, like profitability most likely I think I'm not sure ah Like the profitability is in those large hospitals. Maybe later I'll ask you. Pero let's go muna sa story ninyo kasi I think it's very interesting. Um, so Medhive, um, I, I'm not sure if many people know about the background of the co-founders pero um, college dropouts. Yeah, so I mean, I just want to ask like, uh, una, paano nag-meet yung co-founders? Maybe share okay. a bit of a background ninyo. Ayun. Sure. So actually, uh, yung first co-founder uh, that I met was actually L. Uh, L. Kwan. She's actually a Filipina based in Singapore and uh, her job there was she managed a lot of healthcare events and actually it was through all those healthcare events that we were one we were able to connect and two uh, she was very much uh, I, I guess she she was able to talk to a lot of people and uh, I guess the idea started first that you know a lot of Philippine hospitals uh, wanted like a centralized way to you know uh, find and procure uh, medical supplies so uh, that was the original idea but then uh, i brought up the idea to my next co-founder because uh, he was actually my blockmate in college in up manila mm-hmm. <laughs> we were both taking computer science and that was my third co-founder uh, gabriel lopez uh, and I, i brought up the you know the original idea to him that hey we, maybe we could produce something like this to help out the hospitals because you know uh, you know i come from a hospital i know this is something that uh, could definitely help uh, a lot of the procurement managers that similar to us and uh, we did some research so uh, it was very funny because uh, when we would go out we were able to travel around a lot uh, you know a lot. So we went to Quezon province we, we we went to Tagaytay we went to uh, you know all the the south and as well as in the north we were able to interview a lot of procurement managers and uh, at, at first they thought this was like a thesis <laughs> <laughs> so yeah because you know, we were both college students at that time and we, we were just trying to get the feel of our users in, in the market yeah and uh, but Once I guess we were able to re- you know relate to their problems, uh, we 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 saw that you know it, it's not just a marketplace that these uh, they they need. It's a lot more things. Uh, there were a lot of processes in the procurement uh, cycle with that would slow down or bog down. Like uh, that, yeah, it, it would really slow slow it down. And uh, we decided that okay, so we're not just building uh, you know. 
a B2B marketplace or something like that. But we're also going to introduce uh, things that would really help out or basically uh, make it faster as well as hopefully cheaper. So, yeah. But, um, I'm just curious lang, no? Kasi you were in college nga, di ba? When you were building uh, MedHive, when you were building mm-hmm. a platform. I mean, saan dumating or ano yung point na parang you really decided to launch this? I mean, to launch this like full-time, to go full-time here. I mean, I think our listeners are also interested in that. Yeah. Actually, you, you know, it, it, it was a, a suck. <laughs> it was a very difficult decision, man, for us. Because obviously, uh, we're, you know, here in the Philippines, a college degree is extremely important to, uh, you know, for employ, employment and all that. So, uh, I guess the moment that it clicked was when we were able to prototype it, MVP it, to some, a small group of clinics first and then a few hospitals. And uh, we saw that they were continuously like, oh, yeah, we, we instead of us having to do this, we could just, it, it clicked for us. And then one of the, another key moment was when one of our suppliers, uh, we pitched the idea to the supplier uh, and then, you know, they, they signed on. And they were the ones actually, uh, I, I guess they were pitching the idea to other suppliers for us. We didn't ask them to do this, <laughs> by the way. So they, they were like <laughs> talking about us to other suppliers because of how excited they were that something like us is you know, uh, making it easier for the suppliers as well to access or to reach out to these hospitals that was difficult for them to, you know, to market manually because before they would have to send someone over to... An extremely far region, and then have to pay for all the expenses involved in that. And MedHive comes in, and it makes it easier now for them to reach these procurement managers wow, to showcase yeah. their products online. Yeah, so it it actually makes it easier both for the supplier and the buyer. That's amazing. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah. It's very important and to us to you know create this balance. Na yun nga, it provides value to the hospitals in in the sense that. Uh, all the processes for procurement is easier but for the supplier as well it helps them you know reach these uh hard to you know used to be hard to reach areas I mean. yeah and then i'm curious now so going forward with the story um i'm also curious because you joined and actually won these two competitions ng philippine startup week 2020 2020 so mm-hmm. two years ago na um arise startup pitch competition and seed stars mm-hmm. the competition so i mean um did you join this competition nung, nung like full-time launch na kayo? Or even before pa? I'm just curious about that. And how do you oh. think you won these yeah. competitions? Yeah, yeah, we were at that point, uh, uh, my co-founder Gab uh, has already like uh, decided that we were going to go full in. So same with me. Uh, and I, I guess, uh, actually, we, we had no idea how to pitch. <laughs> so... Uh, we had a lot of mentors. So uh, one of the key mentors that we had was like RT Lopez of Brain Sparks. He really helped uh, Gab and I understand like how how do we present our idea because he said that you know he also saw the potential of our idea, and now basically he's helping us you know, express it to a larger audience and to you know to potential investors. And I guess that's where we learned like. Uh, it's not just about <laughs> it's not just about presenting this cool idea, but it, you you also have to present a lot of uh, you know yeah. uh, growth potential. You have to mm. present you know uh, profitability or revenue and all that. And yeah. <laughs> so to us, we were both engineers, but uh, we were able to quickly adapt, I guess, to like what the startup you know how 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 exactly do you pitch in a startup yeah yeah uh, yeah <laughs> i want to ask more pa about that pero segue muna tayo sa philippine startup week because we're we're talking about this um so philippine startup week 2021 naman so may inorganize si medhive na event um mm-hmm. can you build a business on care healthcare startups responding to covid-19 because i also want to ask about this covid-19 um period ngayon so like i mean how is medhive doing now now this covid-19 kasi um ganun pa dis- disrupted pa rin yung supplies and yung mm-hmm. hospital so i mean ano ba yung ginagawa ng medhive now and how does it really help now given this covid-19 period ayun yeah yeah uh actually there there's this one uh i guess one thing that we we've known for a while and that covid didn't uh invent these problems uh especially on the supply chain uh they amplified it Okay. So these problems existed way before, and uh, it, I, I don't know why, but nobody has addressed them. It it just stuck there, and then when 
there was a, su- a sudden uh, i guess uh <laughs> crisis <laughs> yeah all, all of a sudden these problems that already existed compounded and w- w- that was i guess our you know our opportunity uh to present uh why a digital marketplace or you know our, our platform specifically uh would survive and thrive in not just in a covid uh situation but after the covid situation and uh, actually it's not just us a lot of uh medical startups here in the philippines were you know given the opportunity to present Uh, new ideas especially in a time you know unprecedented time and where your traditional processes are suddenly not so you know good yeah. and uh we were very fortunate that during the philippine startup week we were able to meet you know these other uh health uh, health tech startups that were also doing a lot of good for the uh, uh philippine medical space and uh i i guess that's one of the things i've always say that The Philippine, uh, you know, med- in terms of like uh, startups here in the Philippines, there's not a lot of health tech startups, and it's not very often that health tech startups get you know, the limelight or like uh, get, <laughs> get any focus. It's usually fintech or yeah. agri tech. So it, it's actually, it was. Yeah. It's yeah, actually true. So, no? I mean, maybe if not for COVID, hindi ganon ka mag sa shine or hindi ganon malalaman ng mga tao na important or madami ginagawa yung mga health tech startups. <laughs> Hmm. And yeah, it, I, I, I guess it also opened the eyes of a lot of hospitals because we also had hospitals in where nung umpisa, before COVID, ah, so this was late 2019, we pitched the idea to them. They were you know, lukewarm. Mm, and, so, yeah. 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 and then when the COVID <laughs> crisis started, they were the one to reach out to us. And, hey, uh, I remember you guys had this idea and where you, you could make it easier for us to find uh, medical supplies. Can we, can we come back to that? And <laughs> yeah, uh, we were just happy that, and of course, so yeah, uh, a lot of uh, hospitals as as well as uh, clinics. I, I feel like you know the COVID op- COVID uh, situation opened their eyes, and hopefully that also accelerates the development and growth of other uh, health tech startups here in the Philippines. Yeah, that's interesting, and that's a bit alarming ah, for me kasi parang tsaka lang nag-act or tsaka nga lang nagising yung mga hospitals nung may COVID crisis na na parang kailangan na mag-accelerate ng, ng pagkuha ng supplies ng, ng, ng procurement kanyan and I want to ask then so did this like um um what do you call this this time parang this specific period do you think it helped or parang it boosted how you were able to fundraise yun nga so let's talk about this fund this recent fundraising this pre-seed this recent pre-seed funding round na um you got 407,500 dollars nga wow exact so i mean do you think nag para nag-help yung um, di mo nag-help I, i don't want to put it on that tone eh, na parang naging positive pa yung covid kasi it's not positive it's negative of course <laughs> parang um naging crucial ba or critical ba do you think itong covid crisis sa uh, pitching na to sa pag-fundraise na to and uh, can you just Share some well, insights on like how you, how you think you were able to fundraise this amount. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, definitely COVID isn't the sole reason why we're able to close the uh, yeah, of course, the round. Of course. <laughs> of course. Uh, I think one thing that the COVID crisis did was it just made people more aware. Like I said, these problems existed even before COVID, and the COVID situation just amplified it. And even after uh, post COVID, now that. Uh, a lot of hospitals are now trying to rebound their other departments. That, because uh, actually the COVID situation, you know, is actually a lot. A lot of ho- hospitals took a really big loss with that. So now that you know things are starting to ease up, um, you know, uh, they're trying to restart other things. And actually, uh, MedHive is now. That's why we're now getting into devices and equipment because. A lot of our hospitals that used to just purchase medical supplies from us are now also using us for the you know the post-COVID stuff, mm. and Actually. yeah. So it, I guess it was us making the when we were pitching to the investors, they were more aware of the problem, but we had to also detail uh, the exact problem that uh, that that was going on here in the Philippines when it comes to the small to medium-sized hospitals. Yeah, okay, and then um, actually, many of our listeners want to hear the answer. Na after you fundraise and, and moving forward, na rin, So what do you do with this amount? I mean, just mm-hmm. I mean, can you just share a bit of your plans in the future. 
going forward. Okay, so uh, the first step for us right now is, of course, to solidify uh, the market, uh, the you know, the market space, so, such that uh, we have the supplies necessary for all our hospitals. That uh, because now we're getting to the point where hospitals are now requesting more and more medical products, and uh, you know, before it was just COVID-related items, but now we have to also expand into other. You know, other product chains and other, so uh, a lot of our actually a, a lot of our uh, funding is going to that specific portion, and where we're trying to convert more of the. I guess I guess if you were to say a pie, a pie of what of all the things the hospital would buy in a month, we're trying to eat into to that pie more. So, uh, I guess that's that's the primary focus of our of our fundraise. And hopefully, uh, we're seeing that Luzon and soon Visayas in Mindanao uh, hospitals will also benefit from our platform. So yeah, yeah. Going back to the platform, I'm just curious also. I mean, because we with your co-founder Gab, I think he's the CTO. I mean, yung pag-design ng yes. platform. So I'm just curious. I mean, parang like what principles or what core principles do you have? I mean, like um, yeah, what values do you have or what principles go into building this platform? Yeah. Principles. So, I, I I guess when we're building a platform, uh, one of the I, I guess one of the mistakes that uh, a lot of uh, you know a lot of not just uh, other startups but a lot of companies, even bigger companies, uh, make is that uh, we sh- it should always be I guess customer focused. Okay. So that was why even before it. You know, we we did re- research, user research. We we actually interviewed and talked to the procurement managers, because if we just went on it with like, oh, I think an app like this is gonna be good, and no user research to back back it up or no user feedback, then you're just gonna waste a lot of capital. So, <laughs> to us, uh, it's always important for us that when we're redesigning or designing or creating new features, it always aligns to the expectations of our market which is you know the procurement managers uh and of course the suppliers the so, so not just to us we identified that you know the supplier ma- the sales managers and all that usually they're the ones we would need to cater the platform to and uh it's all that, yeah so that's i guess our primary like you know, principle when it comes to building a tech platform it always has to align with yeah. The expectations of our users, especially uh, yeah, procurement managers are usually not techy people. Uh, especially if you're thinking ho- hospitals outside, you know, the city. Yeah. Uh, you would have to, you know, they they, they would use for uh, you know apps like Facebook and all uh, mm-hmm. Lazada at most, and you have to balance it. Now, yeah, yeah, this is what the user. Experiences has to be for this to work out. Yeah, and 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 that's what I want to ask. So, do you think there's a difference? Um, I mean, like building the platform for the small and medium-sized hospitals to the large hospitals. I mean, do you think there are possibly different principles or possibly different guidelines into designing the platform for this too? Yes, uh, absolutely. So, uh, of course, the bigger hospital groups, like let's say Mount Grace Group of Hospitals or the uh, St. Luke's Group of Hospitals. Uh, they definitely don't need help when it comes to you know finding procure. You know, mm. uh, they would have different types of problems. So, and of course, to us, uh, it's finding ways to provide value to their to the problems that they're facing. Now, compare it to the uh, hospitals that we're currently already facing uh, serving, which is the level one, level two hospitals. It's primarily the access and the uh, the speed of ordering. Which you know we we address directly. So, yeah, uh, it's not as easy as uh, <laughs> saying that all Philippine hospitals act or work yeah. like this. And I think it's not just in procurement. Uh, in a lot of departments, there are very big differences. It, it would seem sub, sub, subtle. Diff- it would seem subtle, but it's actually a big difference when you know you're creating products for these yeah. uh, you know different users. Yeah. Um, yeah, so let's go to our last question. So, ano lang ba ang vision ng MedHive? Or maybe what do you think is the ideal medical market space? I mean, what do you think is also the ideal um, way of of procurement, of getting the supplies, a medical community, a medical supply chain? I mean, can we just 
can I just ask this ideal question? I mean, into the future. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, as someone who has been in, you know, <laughs> seen how hospitals operate, uh, I would like to emphasize how big of a role uh, medical procurement is when it comes to, I guess, the quality of your uh, treatments, the quality of your service. Uh, as well as the accessibility, so the, uh, not just not just like if this service is available, but also is it uh, priced in a way that even the common you know the common Filipino could afford it. And uh, procurement really is one of those big key factors in you know the delivering that uh, accessibility. And I guess uh, one of the m- mantras that we have is that. If we serve and uh, serve these hospitals well, uh, they will be able to serve our fellow Filipinos even better. Yeah, it would be easier for uh, you, you know Filipinos to afford uh, these services, as well as you know, uh, whether or not you know you're in Metro Manila or some uh, remote province in say the Quezon or Calabarzon, you would have uh, direct access and good access to these uh, services and these hospitals would not have a problem delivering that service to you because at least the procurement side we would cover that yeah so parang breaking the physical boundaries not through digi- through di- digitalization yeah so yes. uh, thank you uh, so this is a very inspiring conversation thank you so much nigel so Um, if our listeners just want to know more about MedHive, maybe they're interested or maybe they want to join the team, maybe. Yeah, so can you just share, I mean, how can they know more? How can they get more information? Sure. Uh, so actually, uh, you could you could check out our website, medhive.com. Uh, we're also active in Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, uh, Instagram. So you could also check out our pages there. And if you want to reach out to us directly, uh, whether it's for business or partnership, Uh, you can reach out to us at hello at medhive.com and yeah so well, thank thank you very much yeah thank you so much Nigel this is a very wonderful episode a startup podcast so I really I mean I learned more about medhive and I really think it's an inspiring story and I really think revolutionary somehow yung ginagawa ninyo to help our small our, le- our level 1 and level 2 hospital so thank you so much Nigel and thank you so much medhive Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much to our 14 patrons. This episode is super powered by NutriCoach, the all-in-one productivity tool for dietitians and nutritionists looking for buy and sell online with Sigurado sellers and Benjoy's Food Products, the home of premium bacon ends, tapa, and tocino. This episode is powered by ePlayment and Interleukin. Support us at www.patreon.com/startuppodcastph.